Good morning, Floss Two. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. If you are new, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play, and I hope you'll stick around and let me know what you're stitching. And if you're a turning stitching friend, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate uh, the time you take to watch my videos and to interact and uh, just share my stitching journey. So thank you. Uh, it is Friday morning. Um, we're going to try this again. Last week I had filmed my video on Friday. It was super long because it was just long and it wouldn't upload no matter what I did. So Saturday morning after things still weren't uploading, I said I'm going to film again and that's what I did. <laughs> and that seemed to work a little bit better. So hopefully let's just get going so that we can get, uh, get with this and maybe this will upload on Friday night. Um, I'm not going to lie. I can't breathe at all. Uh, spring, it hasn't felt it temperature wise, but things are blooming and I am just all stuffed. Multiple people this week have been, have said to me, boy, you sound really stuffy. Yeah, yeah, I do. So I have my Kleenex. Um, I'll do my best, but if you don't like sniffling, then this probably isn't the video for you because I have a feeling as I get going, it's just going to get worse. So, you know, this is real life. This is the way it is. This is what happens. Let's get going. Um, there is going to be, I know somebody had asked me about the next trading card swap. This coming beginning of the week, most likely there will be a extra video out that will talk to you about the up and coming swap. Just to give you a heads up, you have, it'll be like a June 1st ship date to send it to me. So you're fine. We have plenty of time. So hopefully I can film that this weekend and I will get that out to you. And then one other thing, I had a shout out. So I found a, I'm going to say pretty brand new floss tuber because they only, uh, she only has three videos and uh, she um, is very new. And she was a cross stitcher like many of us years and years and years ago. And then life got in the way, right? And then she's come back to it and just started back, I think this year. So her name is Peachy Stitcher and it's Julie. She's from the UK. And so she has three videos. I, I started with number three because, you know, I'll look on my side and I'll say, you know what? I don't recognize that. And uh, let's give that person a try. Oh, my eye is itchy. Sorry. That's another thing. This time of year, my eye gets really itchy. Um, and I watched her number three video. I really enjoyed it. And then I went back and I watched number one. It was a short, just hello, this is who I am kind of video. And then number two is, shows more projects. I didn't see number two yet. So I have one more of her videos to do. But she has a nice little variety of projects, uh, uh, just really nice to listen to. I enjoyed it. So if you want to check out Julie's channel, I'll link it down below. It is Peachy Stitcher. And at this time with the time change, because like I said, she's in the UK, she was having major, major surgery today. So let's all send her some good vibes and hope for fantastic recovery and so on and so forth and hopefully get a chance to get lots of stitching in that we can see at her next video. So just somebody new if you haven't haven't checked her out yet. All right let's go go get going with my projects. Uh, with the um, lion versus lamb full coverage event I had started something the end of the week before the event started so I actually have three full coverages to show you today which bumps up my number of projects to 13 this week and it was kind of a bit of a start frenzy to be perfectly honest with you and I'm not exactly sure how or why this happened <laughs> I am just I don't even want to look at the number of starts I'll tell you afterwards um Sarah from Somi Sarah and Sally from um Flossy Sews and Gross <laughs> let me just put down Sarah and Sally are doing the oh oh and I chuckle because Sarah always has to stop and think Fun for 50, Sal, where they're both starting 50 projects for their 50th year. I am apparently playing along in spirit because I am probably, oh, let's see if I look at my notebook here. I have my stitchy planner and uh, what do we have for starts? Oh yeah, we have 23 starts for the year already. Oh boy. So anyway, Sarah and Sally, I am right there with you. Okay, well, let's get going. So last week I talked about how I needed, um, I was finishing up the crafts and books acrostic and I, I needed K for St. Patrick. And uh, actually I think it was Beth who was part of crafts and books 
and Beth is the steadfast stitcher on Flosstube, if you're not watching, she had recommended Karen Kluba uh, for Blue Rhapsody. No, for Rosewood Manor, excuse me. But Blue Rhapsody is the Rosewood Manor that I am stitching. And I had actually started it for Beth's birthday last December. She has a stitch along uh, to stitch anything Rosewood Manor. And I believe she's got two going. One might be Blue Rhapsody, actually. And so I said, well, I need to, I need to do that. So I pulled it out and I put some more stitches in it. And what was really good was for my eye spies. So if you are new um, in my Facebook group, and you don't have to be in Facebook in general. I just have a, a cross stitch game that anybody can play. If you check my community tab, if you're not on Facebook, you can see all the prompts. Uh, I recently started, I think in February, an I Spy Challenge where I have 10 different prompts and you try to find them on your projects and you decide what your goals are with them. Well, one of the prompts for this month is butterfly. So how perfect is that? I actually did work on the butterfly. There's more to it than, <laughs> than you realize. I mean, that was my favorite part when I saw that. That was the first thing my eyes went to. And I could see just stitching that alone by itself, which would be really cute if you wanted to do like a little ornament or something or a hanger. Um, if you really liked somebody, you could put that on a card. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, but I think I messed up the counting. So I had to kind of fix it because it, it's, it, you know, it, it's deliberate. So I, I kind of needed to be a little bit more careful. And so it went a little slower, but I still, um, I put in the number of stitches for me, for I Spy, I try to do a minimum of, actually my minimum is 200. And then if I go over great, which I did on this one. I think it was closer to 300 on this. And it's all in the butterfly. <laughs> but it is, the butterfly is almost done now. So I just, I'm not sure if I'm done with this dark color. There's only two colors. And it's charted, I want to say, in Weeks Dye Works. Yep. And I am doing it in DMC. 336 and 931 are the two colors I'm using. So the darker color is almost done. And then we'll have the lighter. This actually is over two pages so that's a little sticky but i want to get that done so that way i can just focus on the next parts there's a lot of alphabet what i might do is go across and go all the way to this border we'll see and uh, go from there I, I kind of don't know what i'm doing every time i pick it up i just say what works and what do i feel like stitching actually so this is 18 count darling david from those missing stitches and uh, Lynn has those missing stitches. She has a new floss tube out. She does floss tube. And um, she has, for the new quarter, she has three or four, four, I believe, new colors for her Etsy shop. She hand dyes the fabrics. And they are lovely. I may or may not have placed an order for some. And uh, I figured I'd get in before I told all of you because her fabric is fantastic. Her Ada, I don't, I, I stitch on just the Ada, but her Ada is fantastic. I really enjoy stitching on it. So anyway, if you want to check out Lynn, you can see her beautiful stitching as well as check out some new colors that you might be interested in. So that is Blue Rhapsody. And since I did finish the prompt for my butterfly, I don't need to do it again for I Spy, although I could pull it out for Blue. We'll see. You know what I want to pull out for Blue, I think, is Blue Dreams from Barbara Anna. I mean, that is getting closer to a finish. Not imminent but you know getting there so it would be nice to maybe pull that one out as well so we'll see you may or may not see that one again this month and I also do acrostics from crafts and books and the magazine monthly cross stitch challenge I'm just looking at my I have ooh, I almost dropped something this is my challenge notebook and oh I didn't do my April cover page but I thought my May one my March one was cute really simple but that was March right there just a lot of fun and then I put all my different challenges in. So this was all of March's challenges. And I did really good. There's marks off on just about everything. So, and I put down the sales that start in a certain month, so on and so forth. So I don't have my April cover page done yet, but then I have started with some of the challenges. So this is the I Spy challenge right here. And you can see I've started to fill in some things. I don't start my month filling out all of the challenges. As I stitch, I seem to find them, and that's how it goes. But I know I did also pick... I, did I do this for Beth's challenge? Oh, I didn't. I thought I could. I thought I did. There is an R in her acrostic, so I could have. I could do Rosewood Manor. So if I stitch it again, maybe I'll throw that in there. Okay. Now I have back-to-back -back starts. They were. They're both stitch-alongs that I just fell into. 
I can't help myself this year. There's just stitch alongs everywhere. Uh, so the first one is, and they're both from, and I didn't, I, I meant to put these pictures on my iPad so I can show them to you without showing you the magazine. But this is from the Spring 24 Just Cross Stitch magazine. And the first one is He Is Risen. This is a stitch along with Georgia Girl Stitching, Megan. And um, the hashtag is hashtag he is risen Sal. And it's basically to stitch this. I know Stitching Mommy is using that hashtag as well. I'm sure if there's other... I know Megan mentioned Stitching Mommy in her most recent video. And she's doing a beautiful, gorgeous full coverage. I cannot wait to see that one finished. Now, I don't have a lot done on this. Here I was like, okay, I'm going to start here. There's blocks of color. No problem. This is going to zoom. In theory, it did until I counted wrong. And I had to pull out over, I mean, not a, I'm, I'm saying over 50 stitches. That feels like a lot. I mean, it's not hundreds, but as opposed to catching something and only having to pull out 10. So that's all I have right now. This was, I, I had the, kind of like the second strand in, I had assumed something and I didn't look close enough with that. And so uh, when I was counting, and I messed it up and I had quite a bit done, not all the way, but quite a bit. So I had to pull it all the way out. I could have kept it and finagled it. But to be honest with you, I just didn't feel like the entire way I would have had to keep counting and changing and switching. And I, it, that just made me tired thinking about it. I said, you know what? I'm just going to pull it. So I don't know what the light, it's, it, it's sunny today. Oh, it's been raining so much. Oh boy but it's sunny. So it might be showing up a little bit bright. Do you have, I have the two different uh, yellows that are charted. I am using all of the DMCs. I know for the bottom here, Megan has changed that to green. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet with that. So we'll see. Uh, I have plenty of time to figure that out. This is 18 count spring breeze by Mystic Fabrics. Look how pretty this is. And I decided I wanted a purple because I wanted to show a little bit around. So this will not be, I mean, this is a big margin for me. I know for a lot of people that you're looking at that saying, oh my goodness, that's not a very big margin. But for me, that's actually, that's big. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm doing with this one. So I did give that and I do want some of the purple to show, whether I scrapbook it, whether I, you know, make it a kind of a leaner or where to frame, whatever I was to do with it. I do want a little bit of purple because I think it'll complement all the colors nicely. So that's where I am. I plan on working on this one throughout the year. It's not just going to come out uh, for any specific time of year. I like that it's block colors. So if I can count correctly, then it should work well. <laughs> and um, I think, it, you know, certainly with colors, different colors would come out that would work for different prompts and challenges and so on and so forth. So that's where the, the cross stitch games come in really handy because, you know, you can pull things out and... Uh, you know, maybe pick up things that might not see any more stitching time in the entire year. Okay, so the second one from this magazine, the He Has Risen, that was a, Megan started on Good Friday. In theory, that was when I was supposed to start. <laughs> it was a couple days late. I didn't get my act together fast enough, but I'm sure she doesn't mind. This one was an April 2nd start that you're going to see, and I did actually get it started on April 2nd. Now, I don't have a ton to show you because I was debating on what I was going to do for colors. So this is called, it's called Current Mood. I kept calling it April Showers, but the actual title is Current Mood and it is designed by Lee Fish, Fisher of Stitchy Fish Designs. So as soon as I saw this, I want to show you something. Let me, and let me try to hold them up. Well, I have a couple things here. So let's see if I can get to, no, I don't want Instagram. Let's see if I can do it. You know, I'll just show the piece that I ultimately came up with. But um, years ago, and I'm sure many of you who had small children, so my kids, my kids are what? 20 and 22. So, you know, maybe 10 years ago. I don't remember. It was all the rage, especially on Pinterest, for melted crayon art. And I remember there was a melted crayon piece. It was primary colors, and you had a girl with an umbrella. And I went searching for the original and I have other ones saved. There's some really cool ones, to be honest with you. Uh, there's 
there's one with like a drawn elephant and then the melted crayon is all these different shades of blue to show like that you know out of his trunk there's water coming it's just a ton of different really cool if you want to go down a fun rabbit hole do melted crayon art on pinterest almost makes me want to pull out the hair dryer and some grants not quite because i was a bit of a fail at the at the attempt for real life melted crayon art but so this is what i saw and you can see here the colors are a bit more muted but as soon as I saw that, I said, I want, I want to do kind of what I remember in my brain. So I went to Pinterest and I saw a lot of things and I didn't see the exact thing, but this piece caught my eye. In fact, I think you can get this as a diamond painting. I'm not hundred percent sure, but the original didn't have this part all solid. It was all just, you know, you would have had the crayons up top, of course, because you know how the crayons were there. And then, you know, you'd have all the streaks coming down. But this was the general idea and these were the general colors and so i spent a lot of time thinking about how i wanted to do it and again i don't have much to show you let me show you and then i'm going to show you the colors this is all i have <laughs> this is 18 count it's an unnamed and that's another thing it took me a while to decide on a blue i kind of wanted just you know blue nature so on and so forth um it's unnamed and it's from to die for fabrics just a reminder to die for fabrics is not hand dyeing in 2024 we have no idea if she's coming back at all please 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 i hope she's coming back so let me put them in rainbow order but i decided i wanted to thank goodness for roy g biv if i didn't have roy g biv i would never remember the colors of the rainbow all right now there's six here but you get the idea so I went through and I found really rainbow colors. I mean, these are primary rainbow, right? I mean, that's as primary as you can get, I think. So I've got a red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And instead of alternating them like the original is, I decided I looked at the pattern and I counted and I've got it split up. And except for the red, which has three, no, four. Red has four. Every other color is going to have three stripes. So it almost works out perfectly. Uh, depending, I might, I don't know, maybe on the other side, I'd sneak in a fourth for purple. So it would be even, I'll look at it and see what I think. Um, so that's what's going to happen there. So there's one more red and then I'll go to orange and yellow and so on and so forth. The other thing is here, you can see the alternate to the black is pretty light, almost ecroish, but you can see in here and a lot of other places, it's usually kind of more of a gray. That's pretty light, but I'm going to ignore that. So I think I'm going to go with more, I'm going to replace that lighter color with a gray. I mean, not super dark. I thought about making it completely silhouette, but there's some backstitch and so on and so forth to uh, give you dimension, not dimension, but shape. And I'm wondering if I completely silhouette it, if it would look odd. Cause you know, with her purse, would there be a strange bump there and so on and so forth. So I haven't figured that part out yet. If I was good enough, I'm not, I'm not a designer. I can pick colors like this and you know, different things I can change. I would have loved to do this and make the top part full coverage, maybe some full coverage down here and then do the streaks of color but I would need more than the six primary. I would need, you know, secondary and other colors to kind of fade into one or the other so it wouldn't be so harsh looking. And I'm not that good with color. I know I can pull out my color wheel, but I'm not really sure. So I, you know, I thought about once it's all done, maybe at the tippy top, filling in with the different colors. We'll see. If I really like it how it is at the end, then that just might be where I keep it. But, oh, I, I, it would have been beautiful if I could have done it full coverage like that. So anyway, that's what I have. The hashtag is Spring Shower Sal, S-A-L. And Debbie, who is Glitter Dove Fairy on Instagram. And everybody I talk about, I'll link down below whether they have a floss tube. If they don't, if they're on Instagram, I'll link their Instagram. So Debbie had reached out and said, you want to do that as a stitch along? I said, sure. And then along the way, Sandy from Stitching with Sandy said she would stitch it. And excuse me, Carla from Carla being crafty said she would stitch it. And then I, and I looked this week and I wrote it down to make sure I have their name. 
have it right. Did I, oh, there we go. I was like, did I write it down after all? Um, purely by chance, if you watch Lost Our Needles, Amy and Allie, Allie is doing this piece, completely switching it, really cool. Um, I don't think she knew, I, I don't necessarily think she knew about the stitch along beforehand, but I think she's joining it. So that's fantastic. So you'll get to see uh, Debbie's on uh, Instagram. Most of them all on Instagram, except me, because I'm like the world's worst Instagrammer. But you can also then see Allie's, Carla's, and Sandy's on FlossTube, if you'd like. And so I, I bet you each and every one of them is going to be different. It's so much fun. I can't wait to see what they all look like. Okay, so let's talk some full coverage. I'll have two pieces to show you. And then the last one is was a new was a new start because you know I needed it full coverage new start. <laughs> so my focus for March was mini Paris morning, and then I told you last week f there is an event called Lion versus Lamb on Whip Warriors, which is a Facebook group that's currently closed, but will open at the end of the year, and they do all sorts of challenges. So for the month of April, it's to stitch a thousand pieces on a full coverage, then go to your next full coverage, so on and so forth. So I said, I've already had this one out. Everything was out. Why not do this one as my first one for Lion versus Lamb? So I ended up putting an extra thousand stitches in this one over and above what had gotten for three weeks in March because that was when I had decided, oh, I'd like to do that as a focus piece. So let me pull it out for a second. That's where it is. Um, I know it may not look like a ton, but it, this would have had, this is, there's at least a thousand stitches plus more since the last time you saw it. 18 count white Ada, two strands over one full cross. It is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I'm gonna do this because I didn't work on the bottom at all. I only did that so I'd know where the bottom was. Um, and the artwork is by Uliana Babenko. And so this is where the top, where's where I mostly worked. I might've gotten a little bit here, but what I really focused on is on this side. And you might not be able to see a lot of my stitches. There's there is over 5,000 white stitches left to go. I think it's 3865 if I remember. And so it's hard to see, but there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of white stitching. Obviously when it's completed and everything else is filled in around it, you'll notice it a bit more. And again, just going back now that I have Pattern Keeper, it's easier for me to find the confetti and see where I can fill it in. So that will slowly get filled in as I continue with this. I did not, I forgot to, last night I was thinking about, I wanted to go through and count. I didn't write down what I started, uh, my focus in March with what I had started and then I could have just subtracted, right, for counting how much uh, stitches. So I wanna go back and just kind of do some math and figure out what I did in that stretch, um, which would essentially be a month's focus, maybe a little bit more just because I wanted to get that thousand for lion versus lamb so then this one is not part of lion versus lamb yet it will be uh it is it is slated to be my third in line i started this one sometime around when i was filming and then of course i filmed again and so on and so forth but i decided to wait to show it to you then on monday it it, it stopped right because i decided i wanted to do focus on mini Paris morning. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll do 101 in the morning in one piece and 100 in the evening in a different piece ish around there. And I just focused on the one uh, mini Paris. So this is, it's called Limoncello. It is charted by Stitches So Beautiful and the artwork is by Lucy McGee. And this will be the third one. So you will see this. I will, I'm going to show you what I I, I did do some work and I'll show you where I am. And then it will get another thousand pieces. I'm just not sure. The thousand will probably, I'll probably start it this week, but I don't know by next Friday. I don't plan on, you know, trying to touch all. I think I'm up to like 16 full coverages. I don't plan on trying to touch all of them. I'm just kind of getting some work on some. The last piece I'll show you is going to be my um, April focus. And so I might get to the point where I just want to work on that and not worry about lion versus lamb anymore. So this is where I am. Again, 18 count white Ada, two strands over one. And as you can see, there's still a lot of confetti. 
I definitely started to work on that now that it's in Pattern Keeper. So the last time I worked on this, I did not have Pattern Keeper. And while Stitch is So Beautiful's patterns, paper patterns are actually quite nice to read. They're easy to read. They're not tiny, uh, but still, I mean, confetti is confetti and trying to find it in patterns can be difficult uh, in paper patterns. And so now that I've pulled that out on Pattern Keeper, and that's that's been a challenge because every single one of my pieces, most of them have been started. So I have to go back and fill them in on Pattern Keeper. <laughs> but um, there's still quite a bit, but I have been slowly filling in. I've been trying to find where there's something and then maybe these stitches would be new or down here I think is new, but something else up here, I started that strand and then I wanted to finish the strand. So uh, it came down there. But I do think once I kind of get into a groove and now that it's digital, I think this one will get easier. I'm looking forward to it. I do like it. I love the colors. Uh, like I said, I like the way it's charted. Uh, even on Pattern Keeper, I mean, obviously you can zoom, but you don't have to zoom Stitches So Beautifuls as much because they are nice, good sizes. So that's that one. Okay, this is my 25-7 piece. So I try to pick this up for 25 minutes a day, every day-ish, 25 minutes. It works out to about two strands of, of thread, especially when I show you where I am now. Now I'm in fill-in. Uh, this is some cottage garden samplings. And I thought I could get farther, but there's more fill-in than you realize. Oh, look at this. This is, I wanna show you, this is what color of fabric can do. They look like two different pieces. They're both, I think, beautiful in their own right. I mean, maybe you think mine might be a bit too loud, but I think they're absolutely gorgeous both ways, but they look different, different vibe. Do you know what I mean? And I am so happy with this vibe. This is 18 Count Compelling Conscious from Those Missing Stitches. Like now, if you've never seen Lynn's store before, this year in 2024, she's rotating some. I don't remember if this one is available. So some colors aren't available at all times of the year. That's why I kind of every quarter at least once, more than once, I look at her shop to make sure if there's anything I want, I just grab it. But anyway, uh, I did have to finish the gray. That's a gray outline. So I did end up finishing that, which took me a little bit of time. And I do have to one little bit there from the lighthouse, but then the lighthouse is done. And then it's a matter of just filling in. So I, you can see I've picked one color. I think it's 931. I'm not 100% sure. I have a little bit more over here on this side. And then that color I think is done on this side. Then I'll focus it here. And then I'll just keep grabbing a color because at this point it is really just coloring it in. But it's, it's, it's a lot of stitches. So I want to say to you that this will be done next week. I don't know if it will. We'll see. We will see. In theory, my loftiest goal would be to get it done. But I'm not going to worry if it's the five. But by the end of April, that one will be done and I'll pull out something else. Now, I have this piece that I started kind of anticipation of April. I have two of these left. April and May? March and April? I don't remember. It's either March or May. Uh, plus April. And in theory, I was like, oh, let's see if I can get this done for April. No, nope, it's not. But that's fine. Um, it'll get done when it gets done. Now these, something like this, I might now have put in the scrapbook, my stitching scrapbook. But these were originally made for my mom. Where my mom lives right now, she cannot have, it, you just, it, there's not a lot of room for anything. Plus, um, my mom has Alzheimer's. And so, um, when she has stuff out, she kind of, it makes her nervous that she hides it away. So I don't want to do anything that's going to upset her. So a lot of them are already on kind of leaners. So what I've been doing is I've been putting them out here. If at some point she's ready and would like to enjoy having them, then they most certainly can go uh, in her room. So this is where all I am. I'm not a very far. It's 18 count, it's vintage country mocha, it's the unprinted side. So that's the front, technically, and this is the back. And that's all I have. Now this will work actually for I Spy because one of the prompts is clouds. 
and those are clouds. So I'm good on that one. That is my prompt for I spy on clouds. So I'll just periodically pull this out. I mean, these, these are fairly repetitive. If you do them all at once, I kind of, I started off strong and then I just petered out because I'm finding yearly repetitive, um, they're challenging for me. I am going to show you one other that's repetitive. I mean, it's a yearly monthly piece, but because they in theory are the same, but are different, I'm finding I'm having an easier time of these. Uh, this is from Cottage Garden Samplings and it's part of the My Garden, My Garden Journal series. This is April's Daisy. I have quite a bit of April to do. It might be a stretch to get this one done by the end of this month. But it has rain, and one of the prompts is rain slash puddles for I Spy, which was very appropriate for here in Delaware because we've started April with rain, rain, and more rain. Um, somebody did ask about how strict. I am not strict. If you have an ocean, I'm calling that just a kind of giant puddle, a lake. Whatever you have waterish wise I'm sure you can kind of finagle it to be a type of puddle or um if something you uh um are stitching kind of looks like it had just rained but there's not physical rain on there you can say it was rain I, you know there's don't be don't worry about it's got to be a hundred percent to a t let's just have fun with it and sometimes half the fun is kind of creating those connections right so this is where i am on this one this is 18 count light sea glass from To Die For Fabrics. And I thought this umbrella is the cutest little umbrella. I finished that. I did a few of the letters. I finished off the, the daisies that are white. Actually, both sets of daisies are double colors. I will do those in the two colors. The white daisies are white and kind of like a 775. I don't know, one of those really, really, really light blues. And I decided I didn't want to do that. So those are just straight, whichever the white it is called for. I don't know if it's B5200 or, no, it's Blanc. So um, that is just, that's the only change I think I've made. I finished the bunny up here in this corner. This border here will go quick, I think. And then the bottom border should go quick. So we'll see. But. It might be a stretch to finish that for April, but I will continue to work on that one for this month. And I think I got my 200 stitches in, so it did fulfill my eye spy. Okay, so the next one, all I'm gonna do is show you a picture, cause it's my secret. And this is a true secret. Nobody sees this one. Um, is it this album? No, it's the other album. Oh gosh, where is it? It should be. Should be here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I was looking right at it. Uh, Zig's Garden from Ink Circles. Or Garden of Zig, excuse me. Garden of Zig is the actual title and it is from Ink Circles. And this is a secret stitch. I can't tell anything it, uh, to you about it in the sense of it is a true secret. If you watch the Hathaway Stitchers, Erin and Amity, um, they just put out a video this weekend, Monday, one of those days, this week, they just put out a video and they do talk about, because they obviously st they started this secret stitch. Basically you take this pattern, you cannot use called for fabric or called for flosses, but you can change it however you want, but you cannot show it to anybody. And we've all started it. And then May 31st, is the guideline to try to get it finished. Obviously, if you start it and you don't quite finish it, I mean, it's not the end of the world, right? But that's when the big reveal will be, is May 31st. And I am at 25.3%. I wish I could tell you anything more about it because I am loving it. I really am enjoying it quite a bit. I don't know where to put that paper. Um, every time I see it, I keep saying, oh, I wish I could show somebody. But I'm not, I'm following the rules. So. You'll just have to stay tuned to the end of May to see that one. But I do stitch on that every single day because 
It was at one point 100 stitches a day because it's not a huge pattern, 7,000 something stitches. Um, but now I think it's like 115 a day. I'm still fine, you know, uh, given what I have because I'm what, a quarter of the way done. So I, if I just keep up with my daily stitching, I'll have it done by the end of May. All right, my rotation for giant pieces this week was Summer's, Summer Quaker, Leela Studio. I have a rotation of four and this one came up. So let me show you as a whole where I am on this one. I'm getting there, I am getting there. So I worked on this side, let me fold it over. I don't think I did a thing on the other side. I still do have a little bit of the crab to finish, but I'll probably forget till the very end and kind of be like, oh no, I gotta go, I have to go back. This is 18 count Nantucket Sky by Fabrics by Stephanie. And I had to finish this element uh, motif, so I did. I started this motif and then I got kind of tired of the blues and such, so I stitched the sun. Now I am not stitching clouds. So if you're stitching this one, clouds for uh, I Spy. Now, I felt like since I wasn't stitching the clouds, it'd be a little bit of cheating <laughs> if I use this for my cloud prompt, but that's just me. I I'm in a pickle, I would have said that. That's what I would do if I, if I had nothing else to stitch with clouds, I would have called it this one. So I did, as you can see here, the cloud kind of encroaches a little bit on the sun. So I pulled it out a little bit more. Now I will say, I am not always symmetrical, matchy matchy, but this sun is charted completely asymmetrically where the rays are. And it was kind of driving me nuts. I, I'm not gonna lie to you on that one. So top and bottom here on this side are symmetrical. And then obviously this bleeds into the border. So it's not going to be like this, but everything is lined up symmetrically. So that did take me a little bit of extra time to kind of finagle that because I, I did kind of want that to look um, the same, everything kind of balanced. And I don't necessarily see myself really jumping into the middle before the outside is done, but you never know. I might, I, I could certainly see doing the words and then maybe I'll feel like doing some of the inside. I've talked about switching out the mermaid and uh, somebody had done that and they used a turtle, a sea turtle from La Selva Designs. And I bought that because they're, they're, La Selva's fun. I've done a, a couple of their ornaments, like animals with little Christmas hats on them. And, oh, I think I have it right here. I can show you. That's the sea turtle right there. It is slightly big. It's 29 by 26 inches. So it's a little tight in that area. But I was looking at something this morning and I said, oh, I wanna see what the stitch count is. And it may not work because I don't know what the stitch count is, but I'll show you something else that might be an option too. Okay, this one is a monochromatic. I love my monochromatics, you know that. I love color and bright and everything but then I also like uh, kind of it's like a mental break to do a monochromatic and I really I really enjoy that kind of feeling and calming bit of the monochromatics. This is Spring Awakens from Summer House Stitchworks. In no way shape or form is the original monochromatic <laughs> but I decided to do all four of them. I'm going to do the same floss color and switch out the fabric like I did with my Jardin Prevets. And I don't have a lot to show you. Uh, I am using Floche and I'll show you in a minute. And I don't know if it's the fabric or if it's just that color Floche, because not every Floche, the white that I'm using for fish and chips is fine. But this one does rip a little bit, you know? So as you're going, I have to use shorter strands. And so it's taken me a little bit longer. So that's where I am at the moment. I'm using a DMC Floche number 319. I'll pull it out. The fabric is 18 count hush pink from Dove Stitch. So it's printed Oh, you're not gonna be able to tell, but that's a white back there. And it's just a very delicate light pink. I'm not even sure, maybe, you know what, if I fold it all the way up so that you don't have the light in there, maybe you can see the color better. That might work better. So I'm basically using the same colors as the Jardin Privé, but I'm using kind of more pastel -y versions. So for spring, with that piece, I did use pink, but it was a much brighter pink. And this is the DMC Floche, 
as I talked to you about the tutorial last week, um, you can go back to the last week's video if you didn't see that, and that tells you where to look for a tutorial so that you can put your flows. You can see here, I originally started using this before I found Denise's tutorial, so it looks a little bit of a mess, but actually everything just pulls out nicely, so she saved me. Um, that's it, right there. And I think this color is gonna look good on the four. I haven't picked out all four shades, but I mean, I know what colors they are. And I think that green is gonna look nice against the kind of light versions of all four. So you'll see that that set of patterns probably on, over the next couple years. Okay, the next piece. Oh, I need to show you a digital version of this. I finally started it. In fact, I think I had started it before. Oh, you know where it is? It's in here. I had started it before. Where is it? Um, last week's video. But I had about 50 stitches of a line across and it didn't show any. Oh, here it is. Uh, I have to figure, I can't remember where it's from. I'm going to hold it back because basically it's it's just the charted version. It is free on a, on a, um, I don't know what you gonna call it. Just a, a a blog sort of site that has a bunch of different patterns. I mean, technically, I could also it's it's the crest for Aston Villa Football Club. I could have, if I knew how to plug it into some sort of cross stitch um, pattern maker, it would certainly be easy because that's the exact kind of crest. And uh, so I ended up using sulkies for it. This is being stitched for Mo for our, we're. We'll be married 25 years in September. And he is a huge Aston Villa fan. <sighs> Wednesday was not a great day, but half the team is injured. So we're just going to move on to this weekend's game against Brentford. <laughs> but uh, this is all I have. Now, it doesn't look like much, but remember now, this is 20 count. So I am doing it on 20 count. And what's funny is this is fully printed because I did print it off on an 8.5 by 11. So when I originally looked at it, I said, oh, this thing's going to be huge. I don't want it to be huge. So I'm going to do it on a 20 count. Well, now it's going to be tiny, but that, you know what? I think that's fine. I think Mo's going to appreciate a smaller piece than he would a larger piece. It'll end up being kind of like a three and a half by five and a half piece, which I think is going to be perfect. So I'm using sulkies and I'm doing one strand of the sulky. And these are the three colors. The yellow is not a hundred percent maybe what I wanted it to be but I bought a whole bunch of yellows and that was the closest I could get but for the claret and blue I put it right up against Mo's jersey because Mo has a jersey from Aston Villa and those colors pretty much matched I mean as close as I could get again I had bought a couple different shades of the light blue and the, and the red and so hopefully Hopefully I know what those numbers up top are actually the numbers of sulky in case I run out because I only have one of each. Um, so that's where I have. And that's, that's the, so that, see what I'm saying? That's the actual width. That's the top of the crest. And then it'll come down this side, just like it is on this side, probably around here. And I am going to fill in all the blue. Originally, if I could have found a fabric that I didn't have to, but um, I couldn't, I just couldn't match it. And so I said, you know what? I'll stitch it with this. And given the size, it's not going to be that bad. It's full coverage, but it's not that bad. This is 20 count. It's called Slate from Fiber on a Whim. And I'm I'm really liking it. I decided to go with the gray just because I wanted it, you know, background wise to be pretty mellow in case any of the sulky came through. Although on the 20 count, the sulky's looking pretty good. And I don't know, there's an extra border You've got the main, which is what I'm stitching, and then there's another border a few stitches over. And I have to look at Mo's shirt again. I'm, this is a surprise, so I can only do it when he's not in the house. And he works from home, so <laughs> he's home a lot. Um, I don't know if I'm stitching that, but if I do, I thought the gray would be a nice background for because there's it's open between those two layers. And so it'll be fine. Um, if I end up stitching that. And I gave myself enough border because this is a big border for me, certainly, right? I mean, that's a lot. I never leave that much border. 
but I do know I, I this would be something I either make it a leaner or I'd frame it I think um, and uh, um, so I did want some space but it'll still be fine if I do add that extra so you'll see that between now and the end of September because I want to get that finished and be able to give it to them for our anniversary okay one last piece and this is a new start my fourth technically because I'm calling that one as a new start that you just saw because you haven't seen it except as a new start um I want to end up putting all of my all 75 plus I think I have more than that now as of my whip parade in January I had 75 projects I finished some but I've started more I want to put them all in one folder on my iPad, my photos. And so this way, especially with games, it would be really neat to be able to just, and I don't have anything like notions or anything like that. And for me, this is just fine. I don't need anything extra, but I want to have it all in one folder. And that would be a lot easier for when it comes time to show you my stuff too. I saw this, I talked to you about this. Uh, Stitches So Beautiful had a sale and I picked this one up. I don't know if I, I'm not sure if I have the other picture of the other one that I picked. I picked up two. They were 50% off. And I said, ooh, that's a good deal. And this one, of course, you know my how much I enjoy Fourth Wing and the books. And so, and what, come January, the third book in the series is coming out. So I said, well, I need to start this. Kind of looks like Violet with her dragon. I know there's not the streak of the white hair. I've said that before. It is the way it is. It's a young girl with her dragon and they just look... I feel like that speaks to their relationship in the books. Um, it is charted by Stitches So Beautiful and the artwork, so let me show you, is by Sarah Kai A. Quill. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you wanna stitch it along with me, I think somebody else said they were starting it. Please do so and let me know because I cannot wait to see how your progress goes. So this one is going to be my second in the Lion versus Lamb. And I'm got quite a, I got a nice little start here. So once I finish this for Lion versus Lamb, I will still continue to stitch on it. I just won't count it for the games in Whip Warriors. I'll go on to other pieces to count for the games. But this is kind of like the first full coverage I'm starting from scratch on Pattern Keeper. So it should be interesting. So that's where I am. 18 count, white eight of two strands over one full cross. And I don't remember how much I don't write down, I, I look and see um, what the percentages are, but I kind of, it goes in one eye and out the other kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't stick in my brain at all and I don't write it down. If I needed to look, I could. There's a lot of white here, so the light's kind of glaring off of it, but that's where I am. So you'll see this again next week. Well, you'll see it all of the month because I will continue working on it once it's done, but it will have at least a thousand from lion versus lamb and then I will continue with it from there oh it's right here usually my full coverage is I don't bring all of the stuff that has like the flosses and everything for some reason I have brought this one into my pile so that's my stitching for this week I feel like I got a lot accomplished so what am I doing for next week I'm continuing the challenges you know lion versus lamb the across six the I spy all of that garden of zig will continue to get its daily stitch um Summer by the Shore, my 25-7. Maybe that's a finish, maybe not. And then, so I started way more this week than I anticipated. The He Has Risen Sal and the Spring Shower Sal, they were not part of the plans as of January 1st, <laughs> 2024. And I feel like that's what's been happening quite a bit. So I have two pieces here that were also slated for April that may or may not get started at this point. This one's small and it would complete the series. So this is Season's Blessings 2 from Leela Studio. I've stitched summer, I've stitched autumn and winter, so I really only have some spring left. So, and they are not difficult stitches. They're pretty fun and easy. So if I'm feeling like I'd like a start, maybe I will um, start that. The other thing, I wanted to start one of these. Uh, I think it was Christmas. Megan gave me this book for Christmas. It's Cross Stitch for the Earth. From Emma Congdon, Citrovia. And uh, April is Earth Day, is Earth Day happens in April, and um, you know, I'm very conscious of what I can do to help the environment. 
and I want to stitch all of them, to be honest with you. That's not happening anytime soon. So then I have to decide which ones to start. And I like the message on this one. It can be in life or it can be with the earth and the environment. And do they have titles? I'm not sure if they actually have titles. I don't know that they do. Well, this one is called Never Underestimate the Difference You Make. I mean, that can be for life as well as just what we can do to help keep our earth healthy. And I love the colors. It's just so much fun. Uh, birds. Birds. Hathaway. <laughs> there is, um, what was Amity saying from Hathaway Stitchers? She has a hashtag bird herd sow. And there's something that I am stitching that you'll see next week that I didn't think was a bird. It's a bird. So, so I'm super excited because I could join the bird herd sow. Well, there are some really fun birds here. <laughs> So this would be another one that I could join. The other thing I saw, because I was flipping through, because I wanted to show you that pattern. There is this pattern right here. And I'd have to, I'm going to have to do the math. So I don't know if it'll work. But this is one of all sorts of ocean creatures. And she also has a sea turtle. And so I was curious. I'll have to do, like I said, I'll do the math and I'll figure it out. If that one... It might be about the same size as the La Selva one. I was going to see if that one would be work any easier. Um, then maybe I will use that one instead. We'll see. So there is an option, though. Like, if you're trying to fill in with some ocean stuff, this book does have kind of fun stuff. I mean, and that's what's fun about these patterns is that, you know, you can add and do parts um, of some of them, which is, I think, what I want to do. I'm trying to think if there's one that comes, jumps to mind right away. Of course, am I going to find it? No. Um, but like, look at all of those little animals in there. So if you needed like a snail or something, you could pick and, you know, pick a different parts of it and go with it. So those are possible plans for April, since this is my first video for April. We will see. Maybe uh, the Earth one will start on Earth Day, which is not till the end of the month. So I'll have a chance to kind of get my feet under me <laughs> and please nobody start any stitch alongs oh speaking of which because there's the bird the birds again if you watched Hathaway stitchers you would have seen that Amity put out a freebie it can either say bird herd or bird nerd isn't it wonderful if you go to is she boomerang stitches let me on Instagram, let me do, I'll make myself a note. I will say whose Instagram to go to, to find the, to find this freebie. And, um, so you have a couple different options. And, uh, those are some more birds and you could do the birds on their own. You can do the birds. It's, I love the piece in general, whether or not I'll start that this month, everybody stop, stop putting out fabulous stuff. Stop with the stitch alongs because I'm not, I can't help myself. I, it, it's not me that I clearly not going to be the one that stops, <laughs> but you know what? It's fun. It's fun. So I'm okay with it. Alrighty. Mm, so those are the plans. Not exactly um, set in stone. We'll see. Pretty loosey-goosey. So last week I didn't show my happy mail and I did want to show it real quick because I was so appreciative of what I received. Look at this beautiful card and I'm not going to say names. I'm just going to show the, the, uh, wonderful things. Now I have gotten some of these before from this individual and others, and I love them. So they're the little coasters, like the fabric coasters. And as many of you know, I drink tea pretty much all the time. I have a little bit of coffee sometimes in the mornings decaf because caffeine really sets me so this this is my white tea that I'm drinking right now my ginger peach that's been my first tea of the morning every day recently so I use these every single place that I could stitch and need a coaster I have these so these come in so handy and I love it she said she had some extra fabric that was you know St. Patrick's related and it is perfect so this, this, I know exactly where this is going as soon as this is done. It will be in use today. Then I, speaking of butterflies, look at this beautiful card. 
I love this. This would be fantastic. You could cut that out, fussy cut it, and how beautiful would that be as an element in a scrapbook page? You could really, you make your own ephemera. I mean, and the same thing with these flowers. They're gorgeous too. Make use of what's around you. That's kind of what ephemera is. And, oh, this is beautiful. I was stitched a piece. So she said it, it's a freebie. Where'd she say the freebie is from? Let me see if I can. It's a free pattern collaboration signifying friendship from Kismet. It, it, is, it is Kismet Stitches and Michelle Bendy Stitchy. And it is a phrase from Mr. Rogers. And I grew up with Mr. Rogers. I am a I am a teenager of the 80s and a child of the 70s. So Mr. Rogers was definitely in my wheelhouse. And isn't it beautiful? And look at, she's got it fully finished, like ready to go. She's already got a backing on it. So I am gonna make this into a scrapbook page. And I'm so looking forward to it. And, you know, I'm thinking, cause I have about three or four pieces that have been stitched for me that I'd like to put in the scrapbook. And I have one that's already been scrapbooked. I might do a friend's stitch scrapbook. So anything that anybody stitches for me might go in its own scrapbook. How beautiful would that be for me to look through and have such wonderful memories uh, of different beautiful things that people have stitched for me. And then this very last piece, I'm just gonna, I didn't take it out of the, the plastic here. So a friend reached out and she said she had tried for full coverage, 25 count, grid easy what's it called easy count grid 25 count fabric and she didn't really like it you can see here she tried it on a project it wasn't her thing and she said would I like it and I said well I've never tried it but I'd be perfectly willing to and she said well if you don't like it you can also give it away and I said what a great idea because I know there's some of you that would absolutely love it so I don't know if I like it yet because I I keep 18 count is my comfort zone for full coverage. So I have to find a smaller full coverage that, well, one, because I'm not sure how difficult 25 count will be on my eyes, but also just to see if I like it. And if it's not for me, these will be giveaways. If it is for me, I found a whole new way to stitch full coverage, especially if I don't want them gigantic. So thank you very, very much, friend. That was, in, I, she said she was sending me some and I thought it was going to be, you know, a piece, which is perfect, exactly what it would be for me to try. And then this big package came in of all of this. And that is just so lovely of you. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, some of them are like, this is a 36 by 54 piece, I think for one, two, three stitch. So, oh, that one's from Dying for Crosses. I know some of them have the one, two, three stitch tags on them as well. So thank you very much, so much for thinking of me. I cannot wait to give it a try. And I just have to step out of my comfort zone. 18 is like that blanket that's warm and cozy, cozy and you just love it around you. And it just feels just so good. So that's my happy mail. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have only two pieces of shopping and they're both fabric of the month. So technically I paid for them at the beginning of the month. I didn't even pay for them recently. Now, because they are fabric of the months, I do want to give you a chance to look away. So I will tell you each one. So the first one is Bestitch Me. Um, I get 18 count Ada on both of them. So I will throw that out there. So look away right now if you do not want to see this. I'm going to show it up and show you the title because the title would give it away. That's what it is called. And let me show you the piece. Now, this has been a Bestitch Me, I would say maybe every 18 months or so starts to repeat some of them. This is a repeat Fabric of the Month. I know I've received it before from Fabric of the Month. Okay, I've put it down. Um, I think I have an idea of what I'm going to stitch on this one. I mean, it's a little bit, it, it, it's, I mean, it's not neutral, right? But that's because this isn't the neutral group. But I do think I have an idea that did come to me on this one. So we will see. Okay, so the next one is under the sea fabric. So those are the two fabric clubs that I do on a monthly basis. I have still, I haven't done it. I haven't actually said I'm going to, but I'm really tempted to do the colors and neutrals from Bestitch Me because every time people show the neutral, it's so pretty. And I know you can do alternating each month, but I don't want to give up the colors because you know me, I love bright, bold colors as well. 
And because I've kind of gotten rid of some of the other fabrics of the months, I'm debating. I haven't done it yet. We'll see. But anyway, so the under the sea fabric one, let me see what the name, Boreas. So that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily tell you what it's going to look like, but I'm going to, I'm going to hold it up now. It is 18 count Ada. So look away if you don't want to see. And let me hold it all the way up. Very pretty. Super, super pretty. I have no idea on this one, but this one is a little bit more, um, okay, you can look. Not quite so bright that you, I, I can see a lot of things working on that. So, so those are my two pieces of mail that have come in. <coughs> like I said, I may, I may have said add to cart on Lynn from those missing stitches, some of her new fabrics. So, you know, obviously no rush, but when she gets to hand dyeing, I know she's, you know, got, she's got a lot going on. Um, but when they come in, I will show you. I'm super excited to see what they look like. Alrighty, so that's the shopping giveaway. I do have a reminder to do before I call this week's giveaway winner. So let me find, here we go. Um, I did the two, I, I heard from one person. Uh, I'm not sure if I've responded, but I have heard from you. I can't remember now. Um, but Lisa Tripp, I did not hear from you. You know, I forgot to check my spam folder. For some reason, a lot of my Gmails go to spam. If you've already emailed, please do so again, but I am going to check the spam folder. I'm sorry. I didn't. Um, it's part of the Annabella's Spring Trio patterns. So Lisa Tripp, HS5TM, I think that's the YouTube part of it. If you could get back to me, I'd be happy to mail this out to you. And um, if I don't hear by next week, I will call a new name. And then this week's giveaway uh, to decide on a winner. This was Seaside Tiny Town from heart and hand. And I asked you to say the word crab. I wasn't sure if a lot of people would already have it. So if I would have that many people putting their name in, but th there was quite a few. And um, Angie from 1824, 18, Angie, Angie and Sally. Are you 1824? Let me write down Angie's name and I will link her and Sally's floss tube. They stitched this well, it would have been last year, right? Um, and they changed the colors. And Angie sent me the color changes. And I love it. Because, you know, down here, I live in a beach town. I live in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, if you're new. And we see the bright color, you know, buildings. Like, the, the building that's next to where my hairdresser is. Because my hairdresser is right on the the main drag in Rehoboth kind of thing. Where you, the main road, um, right, leading to the to the boardwalk. The building next to it is bright yellow. And then there's another house that's um, bright pinks. And so you have all of the or buildings, right? I, they may be, I don't know what they were originally. I mean, some of them have, I think what would be houses above or apartments above, but you'll see that, you know, in here. And that's, these are a bit kind of mellow and prim for what I would like to see. And so I was really thankful. I had, I've already changed this color in a little bit here, but I hadn't gotten to the rest of it because I was a little bit overwhelmed. So Angie, thank you so much for sending those to me. Uh, and um, her and Sally finished them the same exact way. It's super cute. Uh, so I would urge you to go back. I don't know what video it was. It might be their thumbnail for, for all I know, but I would urge you to go back and look. Their finishes look fantastic. But the winner of this is Kimberly Pham. P-H-A-M. So Kimberly, if you could get back to me, I will mail this out to you. Please, just within the next two weeks, uh, let me know where to send it. Okay, now this week, I was trying to figure out what to do. And in the process, I found a couple patterns that I didn't remember I had. I'm like, I can't, I can't look at them right now because then I might start things. But I have to put them... I hadn't put them away for some reason, but anyway, um, I was looking through and I was going to stitch these from this series as singles and I just changed my mind. I had started the whale tail and I just wasn't loving it. You know, like sometimes in theory, I should love these, right? But in reality, it just wasn't doing it for me. And I mean, I don't mind changing colors, but I think this was beautiful. It's like it is like I wouldn't have changed any of those colors. 
but I was, I was just feeling stressed stitching it and it just wasn't working. So in fact, I just got rid of that piece. I hadn't done a ton of it. Um, they are part of the Tales from the Sea Fragments in Time 2021 series from Summer House Stitch Works. So are they numbered? Number one, two, and four. So let me put them in their order. Four is the house. Okay, so one, two, and four. You will get all three of these if you'd like. And I'm gonna ask you to say the word whale, W-H-A-L-E, the animal whale. I know there's two, two ways to, to spell that word, W-H-A-L-E. Uh, if you would like to see them being stitched as a whole, I believe I saw, it might've been on Instagram recently, Pam from Just Keep Stitching, Pam and Steph. I'm almost sure she's stitching all of these as one full piece, but I don't believe she's finished yet. And it's very pretty really pretty like she's doing I mean her work is beautiful right I mean her stitching is always so lovely but that is a really lovely piece so if you've thought about stitching them together they're here they show them as pillows uh, they could be cute little hangers or leaners or whatever you'd like but if you wanted to do like a little bowl with pillows and you wanted something that was kind of themed along this line you have three out of I don't know is it eight in the either eight or six in the series I can't remember I don't eight, six, 10. I don't remember. Um, but here's three of them. So if you say the word whale, as in the animal, then I will uh, pick a name from those next week or next video. Okay. So that's the giveaway. I've reminded, I've reminded, where is it? I reminded Lisa, right? So Lisa, I've reminded you for this. Kimberly, for this and I've given you this week's for this okay I had done it all I felt like I had forgotten something in that so that's everything stitching look at that 106 all right I'm feeling good about this uh, last week's video that didn't make it was an hour 49 almost two hours YouTube said no I'm not accepting this <laughs> um, so if that's it, you don't want to hear about life. Life is very short this week in the sense of there's not much going on. Um, then have a great week. I will see you next time. Uh, life stuff. It just, it rained and rained and rained. Oh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We here did not get tornadoes. There was a chance we were getting what was coming through across the country. I did see that there were some water spouts a little bit north. You Up kind of as you're going between, there's, I guess you'd call it a bay, right? Between Delaware and New Jersey, right? I wanna say up that way, there's a beach called Slaughter Beach and they had water spouts and everything out that way. And I believe water spouts are tornadoes on the ocean, maybe. So um, they did have that, but it didn't, it didn't hit our area, which was good. Um, we just had lots and lots of rain. So again, our yards are soaked, 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 soaked. The sun has finally come out. It's not warm. I'm not sure if it's going to get warm yet. Uh, but then my friends and family in Connecticut are dealing with snow, plus higher up. I think Connor, is Connor getting snow? Connor's in, in Massachusetts. I don't know if there was snow there yesterday or today. I'm not sure. But uh, we are not exactly... 52 is supposed to be the high today. So yes, not exactly super, super warm. Spring's got to come at some point, right? At least it's sunny. There's nothing like the sunshine. I could I could sit in the car with the windows a little bit so I could hear the ocean and do a bit of beach stitching. We'll see. Um, I haven't done that yet. I really haven't had a chance to because the weather just hasn't. No, I did do it once, but the weather hasn't cooperated. And here we are mid, well, not mid-April. I'm, I'm making April go by faster, but first week of April is done, just about, so... So we'll see. Um, no specific plans other than that. I think we're just gonna wing it and see what happens. Um, sometimes that's the best thing. It's the most fun. And uh, yeah, so that's all I got. I hope you're well, I hope you're safe. I hope you are not, I, I did pretty good. Maybe it was cause I, I, up to this video, I was sniffling and I don't know, maybe I was and I just didn't notice it, but I don't feel as congested as I did earlier today. I didn't even have to use my emergency Kleenex here. So, um, but if you are, if you yourself are also dealing 
we're in this together. We're going to get through. I love all of the new trees and flowers and grass. It just doesn't love me so much, but I'll enjoy it anyway. Um, but I hope you're well and, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Lots of stuff flowing out there and not just pollen. <laughs> so, um, and remember that self-care is super, super important. Please put yourself first sometimes because it is always, well, really, if you're not feeling great about yourself, it's hard to really put everything into helping others and doing things for others. So really take care of yourself. Um, and once you feel good, it, it makes life so much easier to help all the others and, and just really. So self-care, not selfish, super, super important. Take care of yourself. You're important. And I hope you, you get lots of stitching in. Until next time, happy stitching.